Last weekend, I was lucky enough to have been asked to do a demo down at Scalac 23, which is an annual model show held down in Canberra here in Australia. The demonstration was live streamed via YouTube. However, there were limitations with the sound quality and the webcam. So I wanted to put this video together to try and make a little more sense of the demonstration I was giving and hope that it adds some value to you watching some of these techniques in more or less real time. So please join with me my demonstration I did at Scalac 23 and enjoy. Thanks for watching. Uh, so today I thought I would try and give you guys um, three things that hopefully maybe you might have seen before or um, but haven't tried yourselves that you might be able to take home with you in terms of a technique to try. Um, I haven't done this sort of demo thing too often. <laughs> I haven't actually hardly done it at all. So uh, I'm going to need uh, a little bit of support from you guys, show of hands, things like that. And I will be calling on a little bit of help from the audience just to show you how easy some of these techniques are. <clears throat> so I want to show you three things and it's all going to evolve, um, involve oils, enamels and pigments. Um, we've only got 45 minutes so I'm going to try and keep the pace going. But the first technique I want to show you guys uh, involves oil paints. <clears throat> Um, show of hands, how many people use oil paints with their models? Okay, so, so, so about half. So oils, oils you can use in, in, in lots of different ways. Um, but what I'm going to show you guys today is um, Mike Rinaldi uses a lot. It's this dot rendering uh, technique. And I looked at this model box this morning and it perfectly shows what this is going to give us. It's, it's, it's this tired, worn, stained look. It's not even streaking, it's just, it tones all the paint job down and just makes things look tired. It's one of those effects, I'm happy if you guys want to pass that around so you can see what I'm talking about, but it's one of those effects that um, it's very hard to pick how it's done if you don't know how, how it's done. But when you see the difference between a model that's got this sort of style on it and one that doesn't, it's like, oh, okay, that, that's, that's how that's being done and that's how he's making that look a little bit more tired than, you know, maybe some of the others. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with just a few oil paints. Um, so I've got a dust colour. Light flesh tone. Industrial earth. It doesn't really matter the colours because every, every model is going to be a little bit different because um, it's, going to, it's going to, and shadow brown, it's going to depend on the colour palette you're working from. Um, this is just an old um, uh, model that I've got at home that I quickly painted and weathered up. I, I, this, this is going to be a video coming out actually. I did an experiment where I did uh, black, base, black basing on one half. It doesn't matter too much if you don't understand the, the terms, but black basing on one half and then just grey primer on the other side with pre-shading just to see how it would turn out. And surprisingly, it was a blind test I did. I taped it in half, painted, painted. Anyway, keep an eye out for the video. Surprisingly, um, it ended up in the same spot <laughs> colour-wise. But that's for a video. So with the... With the um, oil paints. I'm going to put just a small dab of oil paint on a bit of cardboard. I'm doing that because, well, it probably, it probably doesn't have time to actually do what it's supposed to do. Um, but what that should be doing is leaching the oil, ex excess oil out of the paint, which will make the paint dry faster and also um, have uh, removed the glossy finish in the oil paint. The glossy finish being removed doesn't really matter to me so much because I flat coat most of my stuff anyway at the end. So the glossy, but it, it's, it's supposed to speed up the, um, the drying time by the cardboard leaches the oil out of the paint. Okay, so I've got um, my light tones and going up to the, the darker tone of the brown. And all I'm going to do... Bring the right brush. That's good, isn't it? Anyway, this is a, this is just a little fine brush. What is it? A zero five, whatever it is. Um, 
down flight. Oh, you guys can see that there. I didn't even think about that. So all I'm going to do is just apply some random dots. I'm staying um, along the top edge of the shape. Now, when I'm doing this technique, I would work on one space at a time. So I would try and do the whole model and go back through. I would try and work on a side and get that done, then work around to the front or, or whatever it might be. So I know I'm probably looking a little structured here, but you'd want to try and be as random as your uh, inner voice will allow. So that's just as simple as that's the light flesh colour. This is the dust colour. The surface you're putting it on is a uh, lost uh, uh, That's a really good question. And thank you for asking um, questions. And I would encourage everyone, please just yell out. If you've got a question, just yell out. Stop me if I've said something or done something that doesn't make sense or you don't understand, please yell out. Um, that's got a satin varnish on it. Um, Doing this over like a real dead matte finish, the matte finish can grab onto the oil sometimes and make this a lot more difficult what I'm going to do after this. So yeah, this, this has been varnished in a, in a satin varnish. What about a gloss? Uh, well, yeah, gloss, yeah, gloss you could use. Um, satin obviously is in between matte and gloss. Um, the gloss sometimes with doing this I find will, um, will be harder to control the effect that we're gonna do because the gloss will, will, will wanna sort of not repel, but it's just easier to clean a gloss surface. That satin sort of is in the pocket where it's a little bit easier. Um, so I'm just gonna pop some of the um, dust dots. Now I'm, now I'm keeping my lighter colors to the top, my, my dusty colors to the bottom. Doesn't matter if some go in the top because it's gonna, gonna make, make it interesting. So I'll chuck some up the top. And again, like if you were doing painting a gray tank, Pardon me, like usually the, the, the dusts and the whites work with most things and actually the browns work with most things as, as well. But it's interesting, you can play around with different colors on, on greens and things like that. Like uh, blue oil paint over a green can give you interesting tones and streaking and things like that as well. Um, so this is the industrial earth color. I, it doesn't really matter if I'm mixing the, the, the paints together, but I'm just, just trying to get a random application of these uh, these oils. What sort of brush would you normally? Oh, something a little bit bigger than that, probably. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible with my brush sizes in terms of numbers, but yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it. That, that's what's well, actually working pretty well. So yeah, maybe, maybe I should be using this one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. So you'll sorry, go on. The color palette that you use, does it change that depending on the theater that the, the model's from? Um. Great question. Uh, probably not because all this, all I'm trying to do here is is make the, the paint look tired. And, and, and I mean, weathered is such a generic term, but I'm just trying to make the, the, the paint look faded and exhausted. Um, so what, what this is doing is setting out foundation layer of paint and then you would weather over the top of that. And that's when you would be thinking, okay, is it Europe? Is it you know, desert? Is it whatever? Yeah. So you can see how bright this, keep forgetting about that one. So the star is very bright on this side. I've just masked and sprayed that. So that's a bright white. So this is a good point of reference to what this is gonna do for us. So if you see it did on the other side, I don't know if that's showing up on the. This is a subtle effect, right? So this is not gonna blow your socks off. This is just gonna set your foundations for making everything look tired and weathered. So I'll just push on, I'm just mindful of the time. And then I'll just use my shadow brown which is a darker brown again, and just pop it along the, the bottom edge. With, with all of these effects, if you, if you go too far or you don't like something you've done, because I've painted the model with lacquer paints and, I'm, and, and oils and enamels are uh, oil-based paints or you know, white spirit, you thin it with white spirit. If I don't like it, I'm able to get a tissue or a cotton bud with white spirit and clean it up and remove what I've done for the most part. Does that make sense, Blue Brown? Yep, yeah, cool. All right, has anyone seen this technique before out of interest? Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you, young man. I was happy with that, sweet. <laughs> okay, now this, this yeah, I'm using this white spirit 
Um, it's filthy and I clean brushes in it and stuff, but for what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use it. I just don't want to taint my good one. Um, so these, these are essentially the same products. It's just one uh, is, is odourless and one smells, um, but they do do the same thing. So what spirit is distinct to Turpentine is a white spirit, but turpentine is, um, is, is a lot more coarse. So you would find these, these whilst we're probably paying a little bit more for it, and you, you can get... Um, you can get finer grade white spirits from, from Bunnings and stuff, but I tend to just buy these because it's just easy. I know what I'm getting. I know I'm probably paying a little bit more, but um, yeah, don't use turps. It's, it's far too coarse and oily, whereas these are just far more refined. Yeah. What's it called? Oh, this, this is white spirit. White it's just spirit. called white spirit. Um, AK, ammo, I mean, I th they, they all do it. You know, it's not, it's, it's, and it's just a solvent. It's not. It's, you know, it's not like a paint where it's, you know, there might be some variation or something in it. Um, so yeah, ter terps, I'd probably clean my brushes in. If, if Well, clearly I'm cleaning my brushes in this one. But um, yeah, you can do, it, do that with um, terps if you wanted to try and extend the, the life of these bottles. So what I'm doing now, we've got our dots in place here. And all I'm doing is wetting a brush. This is a flat brush. But this has actually got, um, I don't know if you can see that, the, uh, the bristles aren't all even. They're, they're quite staggered, the bristles. Uh, that's a, flash brush, a flat brush, angled brush, that the bristles aren't staggered. Is that showing up on the screen? Yeah. yeah. So what, the, what these staggered bristles are going to do is, is just distribute the paint a little bit differently. So I've wet this with the white spirit. I've sort of damped it off a little bit. And then all I'm doing is just moving in an up and down motion. I'm not trying to remove the paint, I'm trying to distribute the paint across the part. You can start to see you're getting all sorts of, so this, this, this is essentially like a filter layer. So a filter layer is just gonna be almost like a tint over the top of the paint that we're putting down. Um, if I use a straight flat brush, you'll find it'll probably just distribute the paint a little bit um, differently. Or, and I'm always, you'll notice I'm always working in that up and down motion to mimic gravity and the fall of, 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 of you know, water or whatever it might be that's, that's come down here. This isn't a particular stain. This is, this is yeah, again, like I, I said, just about tiring the model. It's moving in up and down motion. It's okay if some of the dark stuff comes down. It's okay if some of the light stuff comes down. But I want to try and keep that perpendicular, those perpendicular shapes in this, um, in this finish. Just dragging it up, cleaning the, just wiping the brush down. I don't have to, to wet that again with white through because it's already got the, the moisture on it. And I'm just distributing the paint. This, like I said, this is, this is gonna be a subtle effect that is just going to give you a foundation to build on. Um, I, I've got the hairdryer, which I don't know how it's going to go over the microphone. But just trying to dry that wash really well. It shouldn't change the effect. I'm just, just obviously just trying to dry it off so I can speed this up a little bit for you guys to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. But I would usually leave that um, probably overnight. And is it showing up on there? Yeah, yeah, okay, so you can see, you can see, you can see the, the lines inside. I'm going to get someone else to do this side who hasn't done it before. Do we have any volunteers? Okay, beautiful. All right. So, so okay, overnight, we've left that. If I look at it, like it looks all right to me now, just looking at it now. But if, if there's real defined streaks and it's obvious that it oh, hasn't really worked, a makeup sponge, because the oil paint is quite soft and it's sitting on top of this... Um, We've got this solid foundation in the lacquer paint. I mean, you can put this over acrylic paints as well. That's fine. I just use lacquers because they're so hard wearing. Then you could just get your makeup sponge the next day and literally just, just help move it around just, just to soften the effect out a little bit. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of where it's. So, we've just, I mean, you can see the difference between the turret and, and, and the here. Like I've, I've done quite a bit of shading on this model as well, so it's probably not as obvious as, as 
I probably should have just painted it in a straight colour so it was a little more obvious, but um, yeah. But I, yeah, I want to show you how easy that is. So you want to come and have a go? You want to? All right. I'll put you in the dry seat. So just, just, uh, just moisten a little bit with the white spirit. Beautiful, wick it off the air, like you can clean it, like get it right off the air, like you can. Okay. And then just move in this up and down motion. So that, that brush will be picking up paint as you're doing that, right? So you don't want to get rid of it all. Do, it, do a first round. Clean your brush up a little bit and then have another go. If you're finding it's not moving the paint round enough, then you can wet, wet it again and go for it. Have a go with this brush as well. Like you'll find that, you know, it'll distribute the paint differently, but that's, I mean, that's looking good to me. You can see that you can see the subtle streaking in the mm. star and stuff there now. So that's easy enough, eh? It's easy enough. Yeah, yeah. And that will work. I mean, that's not just armor models. That's, you can see that on anything you did on, you know, aircraft of sci-fi loves this sort of stuff you know just getting it's it's that indistinct you know tiredness in the paintwork that's it's it's like i said hard to identify but once you know how it's done it's actually not that difficult at all all right well done <laughs> round of applause <laughs> all right and while we've got our oil paints the other thing that i was looking on this box was um these, these, these artworks are just so great. So we've got this tiredness. So if we wanted to make it even like more faded, I'd just put a bit more white or a bit more buff or something in there just to, just to tone, tone it down. But you'll notice all these, all these streaking effects along here. And like streaking effects? Oh, of course you can, yeah. It's those little things that, that just add to the story of the model. Um, and again, you probably, you know, like you look at models on the table and you don't really notice it at first, but then, you know, the, the guys that are doing these little, little streaks, I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely a fine line of, you know, pushing it too far and whatnot, but um, it's a great way while we've got our oils on the palette, we can literally, bless you, we can literally, just paint them in. Just a small amount. Um, you could do dust streaks, like uh, the lighter colors would be things like rain mark or dust marks. The darker colors could be like, well, wet mud or fill stains or something like that. So we've got our subtle streaking here. I'm just looking to do some more defined streaking. And it's the exact same technique. It's just now where we're applying the oil paint in a more structured way of where we want that actual streak to go. The, the Sherman's probably not the best subject for this because there's some models, you know, with bolts and handles and baskets and all sorts of stuff. So it's, yeah, so with your streak, streaking, think about, you know, why is that streak there? What, how did that get there? You know, it might be a chip, it might be a, um, you know, a nick or something that's, that's got a rust stain. And this is where you'd start thinking about the colour of the streaking that you're doing as well. So I can use, the, I'll, I can use this flat brush again. I don't know if that's actually called a flat brush. Is it just an angled brush? Anyway, whatever. Um, I can use this brush now. I'm just going to rotate it and I'll just work the paint in a downward motion. Oop. Bad angle. And I'm trying to elongate it. I'm going to use a different brush. Shouldn't have gone out drinking last night, should I? So if you can see, all I'm doing is taking that little bit of oil paint and extending it down the fall of gravity, right? And again, I would usually let this sit a little bit longer than I have, so the paint's still very soft. So it's it's yeah, it's very soft to try and manipulate this at the moment. 
But again, just moving in that downward motion. And I can move in an upward motion as well. And I'm just sort of cutting into the side of it, if you see, just to try and keep some definition in that line. We all following? All inspired? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the dust one will come down through here again. It's, it's more or less the same technique, but just in a more refined way. How much time would you spend on, let's say, showing the most doing oil? Uh, the, the dot rendering side of things yeah. that I didn't start, oh, I wouldn't, wouldn't be long. Maybe, maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hour and a half. That's, that's quick yeah. um, because it's just kind of just... But, but sorry, back on that um, technique, I wouldn't... Um, I would focus that on my vertical surfaces more so than I would on my horizontal surfaces. Um, but I would get my tones for my horizontal surface with the airbrush. So I would be, I would be um, airbrushing lighter tones and getting that from there, but the sides, because they're going to have the wear of the, the water running and, and, and whatnot, that's, um, that's where that dot technique works really well. Now, I'm doing this, these streaks with um, oil paint, which is still so wet. Um, there is... Um, dedicated enamel paints, which I used to use for this sort of stuff. I don't, I don't know why I went away from them, but I've bought this um, Rainmarks effect. I, I don't know how this is going to go, but we'll give it a go. So this is an enamel paint. Oils and enamels work perfectly together because they're all thinned with white spirit. So we'll see how we go. So, actually I'm off. This, this, this wash that AK and Ammo do, it's got a pigment in it, so that it's, a, it's an enamel paint with a, with a heavy pigment set in it. Um, and I've got these VMS ones as well. It's the same sort of thing, so we, we, we might have a play with them if, if time permits, but it's the same thing. This is just a straight, dedicated enamel wash. It's just dark brown enamel paint, like the old Humbrol tins. Like It's just enamel paint, right, that, that they market for um, uh, panel line washes and things like that, but I'm going to try and get. Um, I'm going to just try and do a little bit of streaking with it just to see how that turns out. I've got another question. I've got up one of my campers. Yeah. Once it's cured and dry, so any way of getting it off for the insectary spray and start again? Uh, well, once it's cured, it's, yeah, you struggle to get it off. Yeah, I think. This is very thin. I've, I've put a ball bearing in these things too because the, the um, pigment tends to settle on the bottom of these jars. So. See how we go. So again, I mean, this is the same. It's, the, the, the enamel, like I said, is, is like the oil, but it's a, lot, it's a lot more dense. The paint's a lot more dense and um, a lot more, uh, it'll be easier to control. So I'm just going to try um, painting in some, some lines here to simulate streaks. This could be a massive flop. I don't usually do this, so what could possibly go wrong, eh? Hey? You haven't seen my painting. <laughs> Yes. I don't know what I'm looking at, sorry. Where do you need me to look? I don't want to touch it. What could possibly go on? That better? <laughs> so again, it's just that same technique of dragging it down. You can see I'm extending So I want to make sure that, that it's staying connected to where the run is coming from, which is at the top. And I'm just dragging it down. 
and feathering it at the bottom. That's important. So you don't want just a solid brown line going down. You want to try and feather it at the bottom like it's naturally. Um, so the enamels will dry a lot faster than the um, oils will. But the oils are a lot softer. So, but with with if, if I do the streaking with the oils, um, often you you'll you'll wipe the whole lot away, which doesn't really matter. You just go back and do it again with with the enamels. That yeah, they seem to be a lot a lot easier to control. So I have to keep. Uh, keep cleaning my brush a bit more because I, yeah, I wanted to sort of feather into nothing down the bottom there. I'm probably, I'm probably making it a bit hard for myself here because usually when you do this sort of stuff, you, you'd probably do a whole line of them. Just, I'm just not overly happy with this paint. I've got time to see what happens with this. So this is the, it's got the heavier pigment content and stuff that we'll, we'll have a go. I think I'm trying to rush this too much. I'm just going to um, let that dry off a little bit. Actually, that looked like pretty, pretty cool sort of rain marks, I think. All right, so now the fun part, and this is a messy part why I had to put down um, paper and stuff. So what we're going to do, we're going to do some um, splattering effects along the side here. Sorry, I forget I even moved the camera, didn't I? Um, so what we're going to do is um, make a paste out of enamel paint and pigment powder. Has anyone done that before in terms of like trying to get mud splashes and stuff up the side of the... Okay, so we've got one. Okay, well this is good. This this could be a new thing. This is this is another. This is such an easy technique, and it's a heck of a lot of fun. But it's extremely messy. Um, so, uh, pigment by itself it is it, most people are familiar with pigment, just like a like a chalk. Um, so pigment by itself uh, needs something to carry it and something to sort of bind it to the tank, uh, to the model. Um, so what I'm going to do, you can use you can use pretty much anything. To do that, you can use acrylic paints, um, you can use enamel thinner. Uh, I'm not sure if you can use lacquer thinner. I would imagine it would thin out, but I don't know what the result would be, so we won't do that. Um, but it needs something to bind it. If I just mix that with water and try to get it to stick to the tank, it would just be very soft. So once the water evaporated, I'd just you'd literally touch it and it'd just come off with your hand. So what adding enamel paint to it is going to do is give it a um, one, it'll, it'll change the colour, make it, you know, it'll work with the colour of this airfield dust. So they're two slightly different colours. But the enamel paint is going to give me a binding agent for this pigment. Now, the pigment is, is, is a texture. So when you apply pigment to a model, like, and splatter along the side. So the way that looks in the tub there, with all those lumps and clumps that look like lumps of you know, earth and soil and things like that. If I was to put that on the model and then touch a little bit of white spirit on it and I didn't touch it, those shapes would, would remain. So that would hold in place. So it's a great way to create lumps of earth and soil and um, textural terrain type things. Will make sense? Good, good, good. All right. So, I'm going to put a little bit of this um, enamel paint in here. Okay, I bought the drop sheet. Uh, 
Um, now, there's no specific ratio for this. I can, I can use as much or as little as I want. But the more pigment I have in there, the more texture and volume I'm going to create on the model when I start applying this, this paste. So I'm just going to mix that up. Um, you can put um, plaster in this mix, like plaster of Paris, just powder it in, and that will, that will make things um, more harder wearing as well, because as the plaster sets, then you know, it's going to hold in place, and it'll also create more volume to, to the effect that we're going to do. I, I don't have plaster at the moment, though. Um, so we'll just mix that up. I might put a little bit more pigment in just to make it a little bit more interesting. And then, um, hopefully this doesn't splatter everywhere, it's really fun. I don't want to load my brush up too much with this stuff because once we start um, flicking it around, toothpicks in there? Yes. So I'm just going to take a bit of the product off. And what I'm going to do is just run the, the toothpick over the bristles of the brush. And if you'll see what's going to happen, it's going to start giving me like a speckling effect. So I'm testing it here before I commit to the model. And then it's just a matter of where, where's the mud going to sit? Where's, you know, where's it going to get kicked up the most? Tracks moving, so, you know, most of the volume should be working towards the back. Think about the motion of the tank as well. So it's not going to be up and down. It would be, you know, up towards the back of the tank here. So I'm just literally going to start speckling and adding some deposits. Obviously, we'd be doing the running gear, we'd be doing the tracks, we'd be doing all that sort of stuff. But we're working from the bottom up, working from the ground up to create these, these earthy effects. So they're going to be heaviest at the bottom and, and lightest at the top. So literally flicking the paint around just with the tip of the brush. Now, nobody's done this technique, have they? All right, go on. Who's going to volunteer and have a go? Looking for you. Come on, mate. <laughs> thank you very much. What's your name? Uh, Jared. Uh, thank you, Jared. Yeah. All right, so we'll get a little bit on the... You're all right with um, like white spirit yep. stuff, yeah? So a little bit on the brush, and just unload it a bit. I'll get rid of that so you can do a few testers on the uh, paper. So the toothpick's there. My left. Uh, paper. Oh, paper. right, okay. okay. I won't hold that against you. So, so pretty much hold your brush in place yep. because that's going to determine the angle and then just run the toothpick over it. To, oh, um, man. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you can try different ways. Yeah, so see? So the closer you get to the surface you're trying to put it on, the more sort of control you're going to get on the application when you... So, when you're further away, it's going to splatter more. Okay. But you see how you're controlling like the angle and the way that's coming out yep. pretty well. So that's really fast. Yeah. Kind of slower. So when I do it, I would literally just, you know, once you get a feel for how the paint is coming off. Did you like that sound effect as well? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't planning on that. Just came out. Um, sweet. All right. Let's do it. So I don't care where you do it. It's, yeah, it's um, if you want to, yeah, you know. But think about the angles. Think about the logical places where this would be going. There you go. Beautiful. And if we had plaster in this mix, or even soil, you can throw like static grass or, or, or soil or debris or flock, and it it it'll, it bolts the volume of of it up. And if you if you're doing this around the running gear or the stuff like like some of it gets like quite muddy and whatnot, and it's a great way to just build up volume and, um, and just add that organic textural element to your models. Yeah, that's stipple. You flick it on. I flick it on. You can, yeah, no, def definitely don't stipple, no. Your flicking will give you realistic looking dots. Is that coming up on the screen? No. Well, look, um, you guys will all see this model. You, you're all welcome to handle it and look at it and touch it. And, um, yeah, so the light colours, the light colours with the, with the pigments tend to simulate older dust um, and drier dust. And then what we can do is come back and layer in darker tones 
in a more refined way to simulate the, the, the newer deposits like the, and the, the damper soil or, um, you know, leave it wet. So how, how are you going? Yeah, really good. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> All right, give them a hand. <laughs> so, thanks, mate. Yeah, it's looking killer. So we'll just do a bit more. Da, 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 da. So yeah, it's literally just a bit of this. As long as you're thoughtful with your application, like you just don't the, everywhere, the, 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 the random, which the gloss on the tank makes it hard to see in it. Um, the more random it is, not the better, because it needs to be thoughtful, but you know, it doesn't matter if you get a rogue splash here and there, because it's, that's what you're simulating, right? There's, there's, nature is not perfect. Now, if you get um, some splashes like that you think maybe overscale or in the wrong spot with this technique, all you need to do is just wet the brush with white spirit and literally just, you can just blend it out, just touch it, blend it out and it'll disappear. Or if you wanted to get real creative, and I, I don't want to do it through this area because there's some really nice um, speckling and stuff through here, but you can actually even drag these in a downward motion and you're going to create another layer. Looks like dust that got wet that kind of just is wicking down and um, moving away. And then what I would do, so I mean, you can start mixing different coloured pigments in there, you know, make it a little bit darker. So I'll see what happens, eh? I haven't done this before. So this is a, a, a Russian. Russian earth, it's a dark pigment. Uh, <laughs> Which one? <laughs> oh, this, is, this is my old paint mill, this one. So I'll use a little bit of this carrier, I'll get a bit of this um, darker one. Literally just mixing a paste, and you can see what the, the effect that the pigment is having on it. So we're making it a dark paste now. And then when I apply this, I, I actually probably shouldn't be using this brush, but I'll just do it anyway. And I say that because um, different brushes will give you different effects and different applications. So um, obviously this is a fairly, you know, rogue sort of, um, rough old brush, if I was to use a flat brush, you know, you, you, you get straighter lines or um, smaller brushes are obviously going to distribute a smaller amount of, of product. It's not showing up on the, on the green. It was a bit of a failure. Sorry, guys. You just can't see it. So that's got the um, that's got the pigment in it. With the with that, you can just do it with your um, with your, just your enamel paints as well. Should a bit darker. Might be able to see it a bit better. And I'll use a different brush. I'll use this brush. I always dip them in too far, and can never see how far down that is. So I just want to be applying that. Just can't see it over the green, sorry, but it's there. So what I would be doing is um, greatest coverage would be in the lighter color and then the darker colors would be, you know, moving down, moving down. And, you know, I just keep them to the bottom edges of the, of the model, so to speak. How are we tracking? All good? All right. Um, Stippling them on. So how I would do, and yeah, you can, you can do that, won't give you this effect, but where I would paint this stuff on, well, we've still got time, is, and it's gonna give us a different effect. So that back half and this front half are probably gonna be, you know, a little disconnected, but um, there's nothing stopping you from um, applying this enamel wash or this, this um, pigment wash that I've made in this manner as well. So if you want to, want to stipple this on, um, even a sponge, sponge is a really handy um, tool. 
used that you can use to distribute um, oil paints and enamels, and will create um, interesting patterns in the paint. I don't have a sponge, of course, but yeah. Um, so you could do that. I'm just going to dry this off quickly. So I'm, I mean, ideally, I'd want to be leaving this a bit longer, but again, it's the same technique of just blending in an upward motion. But we can, um, you know, start creating interesting, um, you know, dust effects by doing this in the in the bottoms. Is that sort of coming up? Sort of. So this is where you need to be a little more thoughtful about terrain and. Um, weathering what it's seen, where the tank's been. But you'll notice everything is in this up and down motion just to just to just just to sim, uh, simulate and mimic that gravity in real life. Every, everything works in that manner unless there's motion, which is our flicking of the paint, which is it's going to be affected by the motion of the tank. Once you've done everything you're happy with it, do you then seal it with a gloss coat or a matte coat? Um, Does that affect the, the look of it as well? Uh, I, I, I would matte coat just about everything I do, yeah. And I know, like people say with pigments, that's a no no, like, you know, because you want the textures and the colours and the tones. But for me, the, the varnish is also going to be another layer of uh, like a shield for it to protect it because I mean the pigment is still a little you know it, it's it's a little um, soft you, you can use pigment binders and things like that that would make it harder wearing but to answer your question outright yeah I'd, I'd usually put a, 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 a matte varnish over everything just to just to seal everything out and again with this with this dusting pattern that I've, I've formed here As long as you don't leave it too long, you can you can you can help it out with this makeup sponge, which will just the enamel will be harder to move around with this than the oil paint was, just because the oil paint's a lot softer. But as long as you don't leave the enamel paint for too long, how long's a piece of string? Um, you can re refine that effect with the sponge. If the sponge doesn't work, you can. You, you'll be able to reactivate the paint, I, I, I don't know, maybe maybe a week, but don't, don't hold me to that. Definitely a day or two, a couple of days. But again, I'm just able to reactivate it with that white spirit and, uh, and move that around. So you don't double coat every session so that you don't disturb the previous effect? Uh, no, I would use a satin varnish to do that. Yeah, you still do after every, uh, Not after everything. After every, uh, I would do that dot rendering technique and then I would probably seal that so. before we started doing this. Because I don't, if, if, if I start doing this and it starts to get ugly and I'd want to get it off, um, then, then I could do that because it's that all that dot rendering I did before has been sealed. I can clean this off and we we'll just start again. Did you, did you guys want to pass this around and have a look at it? You're welcome to come up, pass it around. I mean, it's still probably a little bit wet, but you know, it, it'll give you an idea of some of the um, speckling techniques and, um, and some of the dusting techniques that I've done. It's all um, pretty quick and easy. Like, I, I, it's there's a lot of um, like people get a little bit scared off with weathering their models, like just because it's that point of no return. But it doesn't have to be that point of no return. If you've if you've sealed your model with a varnish, you know the integrity of your paint is good. So you've you've primed. You've you know again why I paint with lacquers, but you know that's not saying acrylics don't do the job as well. But if you'd painted that in enamel paints as your foundation layer, this this all goes out the window. Everyone follow that. Sweet. Um, 
Yeah. So yeah, you, you definitely set, I definitely set myself insurance policies every step, you know, so I'll do that dot rendering and, you know, seal it. But I don't, I don't go too over the top with, with the varnish layers. I, I, I try to, I try to extend it as far as I can without thinking, okay, if I get in trouble here, um, you know, wh where do I go from here? But I mean, I've been, I've been sort of painting a building long enough. I don't worry too much about it, but um, yeah. Definitely a dull coat at the end. Not dull, well, yeah. VMS Mackley, outstanding. So what's your preferred uh, so. uh, that, that VMS var um, um, varnish is, is unbelievable. It's, it's, um, it's VMS, it's called. If I can't get, it's, okay, so they're, they're a European brand. v and are selling them now for what it's worth. Um, it's the best varnish I've ever used in my life. V for Bob, V-M-S. Oh, uh, v, for, v for Victor. M. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is, and th yeah, this, these are um, liquid pigments that they've, they've sent me over, which is pretty much going to be the same as, um, as this. It's just an enamel paint with a, with a high pigment content. I just haven't got around to trying it yet. Um, I think I've got the flexible super glue. Yeah, probably it's a, the super glue is great as well. Yeah, it's, it's um, I mean, I've got no affiliation with it or anything, but yeah, it's just, it's just good stuff. It's good stuff. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, go for it. Great question. Which part of that? Uh, the dot rendering? Or the um, or like the, the actual splashes and stuff. The, the splashes. The splashes would be the last thing I did. Yeah, that would be the last thing I did. Um, yeah, chipping chipping's fun. Yeah. <laughs> the dust would go over the Yes. Yeah. See, and I would probably do. I would airbrush a layer of dust on that model before I did all that speckling as well. So if that if that was actually my model, like that I was building. I would um, do a, a, an airbrush layer of dust in maybe like a deck tan or a, a buff or, or like a colour like that and set the foundation for where the, the dust effects were going to go. And then I would start um, the speckling and, you know, deposits. If you want to build up bigger mud deposits, like big hunks of mud around the wheels and stuff like that, I probably wouldn't use pigment for that. And now I've told you how good it was for that. <laughs> I would use an acrylic textured acrylic mud paste to get the volume because that's going to dry like a rock. Does, does everyone know what I'm talking about? If, if you're not, I'm more than happy to talk to you afterwards and, and, and share that with you. Um, and then over that, when you've set your foundations with this acrylic mud paste, once that's dried, then you can start playing with pigments because the pigments give you a much finer, more sort of scale look, like, you know, textured earth look to them than the textured acrylic paste do. Sorry, I probably sound like I'm talking in riddles. Anyone else, any other questions? No, all good, I've run out of content, guys. <laughs> uh, if, and look, and if anyone wants to have a go, please come up. Since we've, we've still got 15 minutes um, till the next one starts. So if anyone wants to have a flick with the brushes or try and blend, you, you're more than welcome to, um, to play around with the model. What are your preferred oils? Uh, or, or as in these? Yeah. Um, I don't really have a preference. I think um, I, I buy these because they're just easy to buy from the hobby shop. These Ab Abtuling, or however it's pronounced. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Bloody Australian. Um, so I, I've got these because they, they just end up in the, in the shopping cart, you know, with, with the other things. Um, but they're good paint. Like, don't get me wrong, they, they, they're great paints. This, this I've had for, I reckon, 30 years, just from the art shop. Like, literally, that's what I've used in 30 years. You just, you hardly use any. And the other, I mean, the other thing you can do while the, while the oil's on the palette, like, there's no reason you can't be using this as a, um, as a, as a wash stage as well, you know. I mix them, I just mix them on the, on the um, cardboard palette. And I've got, a, I've got a pin wash there, you know, so I can start applying that as well. But I think the, um, without bagging out, you know, certain brands and stuff. I think that oil um, paints with the, you know, the, the lipstick style brushes, just a bit of a gimmick. 
quite frankly. The oil paint's probably as good. I don't know, but yeah, like this will last you forever. Sorry, yeah, what's good? Yeah, uh, more about um, doing your project. It's a point like, oh, oh yeah, mistake. <laughs> inevitable. Yeah. Uh, sure, everyone. Notice how that feels like. So, how do you sort of personally like? How many times have you been like? Got to scrap it all. Come on, it's fine. It's going to keep going. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. that, that's a pretty complex question yeah. because doing um, doing the videos and doing the reviews and stuff for modeling news and um, like you just you just have to push on, you know. So I think I think that's when when I before I was doing that stuff, I would get to eighty percent and something like that would happen. And then it just get put aside for something else. So I had, you know, I had a cupboard full of eighty percent finished model. I never finished models. So um, how do you get past the mistake? Well, I guess it depends what the mistake is. Yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah. It's, it's. I think it's mindset, and I think I. It's just confidence to just press on, and even though looking at it, thinking that it might look like garbage, just having the confidence in your skill set, or just it doesn't matter, actually. You know, even like even if you, you bugger it up, it just doesn't matter. Um, just 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 have perseverance. Does that does that help answer? Like just 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 persevere and know that it's going to be okay in the end. Because you keep pushing um, and, and you'll get to a point. You know, and I mean, and I do it. I, I I agonize and I look and I'm back and forth and back and forth and I'm trying to video it. Okay, what do I do now? What do I do now? And then, you know, my wife hates it when I come downstairs and I'm like in a bad mood, you know, what's wrong now? And, um, and I agonize it, and, but, but it's a thought process. But then, in the end of it, it's just like, just suck it up and it's going to be okay. If you're not sure where to go to the next step, just, just, just do something. Something's better than nothing. Yeah. I hope they will. <laughs> Words of advice. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone want to have a go at um, flicking paint around? I think we've probably got five minutes before I have to pull it off. Come on, come and have a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, it's here. We'll, we'll stop the formalities anyway, but, yeah, if, if you want to come up and have a look, by all means, please do. Um, I really appreciate your time to, today, guys. I was kind of sweating this one. So. <laughs> it was, uh, no, I really enjoyed it. Well, that went better than I expected.